Alright, so today we are talking about the secret to creating smooth camera drifts with Inside Cinema 4D. Now if you've never created a camera drift, all it is is basically after you do a move of any sort, it's just continuing that move in a slower fashion. So for instance here I have a camera move that comes in, it stops, and the idea is that we just want it to kind of continue to push forward in. Alright, so we have this, comes in, and then continues to push forward. This is great, it's fine, it works. There's only one problem, and that is that it's very boring. <laughs> All right, so to, to demonstrate, if I wanted to make this be a little more interesting on the move in, and I came here and I pulled out these handles. So now it kind of snaps in, and then it, then it goes to its position. What you're seeing here is that it's actually pulling out the other side of the handles, right? So that's that's causing the, the slowdown. It's, it's stretching everything out. So this really isn't a good option for us, right? And the reason why this is happening is because there's something called auto tangents. So you'll see if I turn this on, it gets us right back to where we were. But the minute that I, that I stretch it out, it goes off again. So this is not a good option for us. So let's just go ahead and get rid of this. What we actually want to do is we want to create a separate controller to control the drift. So we know we like our camera move that comes in here, it snaps in, and it does what it needs to do. So let's go ahead and let's create a null and let's call this drift. All right, the next thing we wanna do is let's go ahead and let's go to our last keyframe of our camera and let's just make sure that our drift's coordinates are set to the exact same position as um, our camera's end position. Now you don't have to do this, but it just makes it easier for the sake of number. So all I did was just drag it underneath and set everything to zero. Then we can drag it back out. Now, a lot of people might from here go in and drag their camera underneath the drift. Now, I don't recommend this because in the long run, what it's gonna do, it's gonna mess up your local coordinates and your numbers are gonna get kind of all messed up and I find that it's just less flexible and less robust. What you actually want to do is you want to parent this in a different way. So this is where the secret comes in. So let's go and let's go ahead and sh uh, search by hitting Shift C and let's search for a constraint tag. Okay, let's take that constraint tag and put it to the camera. Let's select parent. All right, and then let's take our drift and now our drift is going to be the camera's parent. The biggest difference is no matter where this drift position is, its local coordinates for the camera are not going to change. And that is the key. So it's like two completely separate items. It's kind of how After Effects works is how I think of it. So I can come here to my drift and now my drift is controlling this any old way I move it. And the beauty is, is that if I show us our camera here, you'll see that the camera coordinates don't change. So it's like you get to keep all your hard work of this initial uh, of this initial animation you did. All right, so now let's go ahead and animate our new drift controller. So let's go ahead and make sure that we're on the last keyframe of the camera. Let's go to our drift and let's go ahead and set a, a keyframe there. And let's go to our last keyframe and let's just push it in quite a bit. Why not? Um, to a position, to an end position. And what I'd like to do is I would like to come here and let's look at our keyframes. So you can see we have our camera keyframe and then we also have our drift keyframes. Now, right away I can tell what's gonna happen. It's gonna come over here and it's gonna kinda come to a stop like that because this keyframe has an ease in it and an ease, an ease in and ease out. So the simplest thing to do is just go ahead and bring these in. So it's just kind of already starting. And usually on the last keyframe, I just set it to no handles because um, you just want to continue, right? So let's see what we get here. So we still get a stutter step, all right? Now how you fix a stutter step is you just pull this over the last keyframe of the camera. So we're almost creating like a transition, right? So let's go ahead and go in. And now we have our fast move in, but then we also have our drift in, okay? Now you can, you can still finesse this and do what you want. If you want this, maybe if I come over here, it's probably gonna be a little more stuttery. So then perhaps I could just bring this up and we have that. The point is, is that we now have a system where I can now control 
my camera independently of my drift. So I can come in here and have this actually be less snappy. And then this is gonna probably have to come in like this and maybe like this. And then we have a system that we can independently control our camera move and our null. And that is really truly the beauty of this. Now, it's not a silver road solution. You still do have to pull keyframes a little bit, but the key is that um, you make this transition here and you kind of have it almost linear is what I would say. Um, you, you do kind of what it needs. Every situation is going to be different, but you make it to where they cross over and there's kind of a blend between the two. So that's going to do it. It's as simple as that. It's a matter of just keeping your camera animation as it was and then creating a separate controller and a transition between them. Um, that is the secret. So I hope that this is going to be helpful for you in the future and I hope it helps you create better, smoother animations and I will see you on the next one.